right, welcome to the second video on transformations. Um, now the next thing we're going to look at is, let's say now rather than doing vertical, we're going to do horizontal. So if you didn't already watch the vertical uh, video, please go back and watch that because I explain a lot where I got my f of x and what t of x uh, actually equals. So when we're dealing with horizontal transformations, um, what we first looked at was um, when f of x, when we're doing vertical, we're adding, um, adding it to our f of x. We're adding c to our f of x. It's pretty much a plus or minus c. Now, what you can think of, what happened was that shifted it up or down or changed the y coordinates. Well, now what we're going to do is when we're dealing with horizontal transformations, what we're going to have is a horizontal transformation is now when we do t of x is equal to f and oh, I want to write this. Okay, I'll just write. I'll just write uh, x plus or minus c, and we can just say when. C is positive, we shift C units left, and when C is negative, we shift C units right. Now I'm going to give you a couple examples, and then I'm going to kind of show you why that's true. So the first one, let's say, uh, here's my f of x. So if I do f of x equals the square root of x, and let's say it's now, now it's within my function, so it's going to be x plus 3. So a very common mistake that a lot of students say, they want, they want to say it's positive, so therefore it's going to go right on the Cartesian coordinates, so they say, you know, shift right 3. But actually, I'll show you in a second, but actually this is going to be shift left 3. So therefore, if I was going to take my graph, I would just use this point, here's my parent graph, I'd just shift it over 3 units. 1, 2, 3. And I graph the same equation. Furthermore, um, let's do another one f of x equals the square root. Again, I'll just kind of be uh, negative 1 plus x. I'm just rearranging the variables. Again, guys, we should know that we can just rewrite these. x minus 1. And therefore, now, since this is under the function, see, if this minus was outside of there, that would tell us to shift down one unit. But since it's inside of our function, because our function is the square root, since it's inside of our function, we're going to shift this one unit. All right. Now, I like to say, well, well, how are you getting this true? Well, you know, how do you how do you know that it's to the left and to the right? Well, I'll just give you a quick little example, um, and I'll use just a different function. Hopefully, one you guys are a little bit more familiar with. If we use the function uh, f of x equals x squared, and one thing you guys should know is the point 2, the point 2, 4 is on the graph, right? Because 2 squared equals 4. So if I was going to do something, and I was going to say, well, how about we did f of x, and let's say we now change it to uh, x minus 1. So therefore, if I was going to now plug in my point and I wanted to find out what is f of 2, well, you plug in 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So I go over 2, and now my new point would be right there. Well, if you were to shift this graph to the left 1, you think about this, you shifted this whole thing to the left one, everything look over here. This point would never be there. So when you look at it though, so therefore we can't shift it to the left one because we know that 
evaluating the function at 2 for x minus 1, we get the point one, or 2 comma 1. However, if I shift this whole graph over 1 to the right one, and then I graph, and then I graph it, what you guys will notice is it intersects now at that point. So I know sometimes it's, you're always going to get confused, you know, because we always think of positive as up and to the right. But just remember when it's inside of that function, we're going to be dealing with actually the opposite. So when it's uh, positive, you're going to shift to the left. And when it's negative, you're going to shift to the right. And that is your horizontal transformation.